Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Jones, the founder and medical director of Innovative Wellness Center here in Phoenix, Arizona. I've spent the last six years working with peptides to help my patients optimize their performance, their health, their wellness, and their longevity. I lecture regularly on peptides. I educate other practitioners on peptides, and I'm the host of the Dr. Greg Jones Optimization Academy podcast, where I'm always talking about peptides. So today we're going to break down three things. First, what peptides are, how they work in the body, what they can help with, and also how they can be delivered, as in how can you take peptides and what to look out for. So let's start with what peptides are. Peptides are sequences of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. So if you go back to old school biochemistry and your old chemistry and biology classes, you probably know or heard of amino acids or you take amino acids for you know, post-workout and help you with your strength and muscle building. But amino acids actually bind together and become peptides. Peptides will bind together and become proteins. And the way I like to explain that is think about a amino acid as a word, right? So some words mean something. So if I tell you run, you're probably going to know it's time to get your feet moving and to run. But you don't know where you're running to. And that, when you put those amino acids together in a peptide, they become a sentence. So it's like run to the store. There's more meaning, a more specific function for that amino acid. And lastly, when you put sentences together, they become paragraphs. And those are proteins which have more higher order functions in the body. So what peptides do, they act as signaling molecules. They tell the body to do something. They tell the body to perform a function. So when these peptides bind to their specific receptors, and they're very specific, and this is where it get into what makes them very safe, they will tell the body to perform a function. That function could be build muscle, heal a tissue or a tendon, lose fat, build muscle. We're going to go into all the different reasons you can use peptides. The good thing, the amazing thing is that peptide is only going to bind to that specific receptor. It's like a key going into a lock. And so again, peptides are going to tell the body to perform a function. So your first peptide that most people know about, and one of the first peptides synthesized was insulin. Most people know insulin as a compound used to lower blood sugar and lower glucose. But insulin is not running around your body, gobbling up glucose like Pac-Man. It's telling the body to do something. When insulin binds to its receptor, it's opening up this transporter, which allows glucose to come into the cell. So it's telling the body to do something. Another way to think about peptides and how they signal in the body is think of them like a text message coming to your phone. Most times you get a text message, the only person getting that message is coming to you, unless you're in a group chat, a whole different story. That's different than shouting across the body where everyone can hear it. And that again leads to some of the safety benefits of peptides. They're only going to bind to that receptor. You're the only person getting that text message. Sometimes when you're yelling across the room, everyone's hearing that message. Some people aren't supposed to hear it. And this is where side effects come in. You might be taking a medication to help with, say, constipation or diarrhea or headaches, but that may bind to other receptors in the body and cause side effects. For instance, if you're taking a medication for a headache, say ibuprofen, is going to lower inflammation. But ibuprofen also is going to bind to receptors in the gut, and that actually can affect the gut lining and lead to gastritis and ulcers if it's taken too long. So again, you want that message to be very specific and not shouted across the body. Another way to think about peptides is if you were in your house and trying to turn on the lights. So if you go up to a switch and flip that one light in that room, it's going to turn on the light in the room. Another way to look at it, a better way to think about it, let's say we're going to turn the light off, right? So if I go in and I say, hey, turn the light off in the bathroom, you go in and flip the switch, the light's going to come off. That's a peptide, very specific, that one light receptacle, right? Now, when it comes to, say, certain medications, they, they may turn off every breaker in the house. And again, some of those breakers you don't want turned off and that side effects. So what can peptides do? So peptides will bind to specific receptors, and they just have all these amazing functions in the body. Peptides can upregulate a protein called a brain-derived neurotrophic factor and improve focus and cognition and memory. They can help modulate neurotransmitters and help with focus and concentration and lower stress and anxiety. They can cause weight loss by binding to certain receptors in the gut and the pancreas and causing a balance of insulin and lowering inflammation, reducing appetite. Most of you guys have heard of these peptides called GLP-1 agonists. Peptides can help heal. They can help lower inflammation, help regenerate torn and injured tendons and ligaments. They can help rebuild muscle and improve athletic performance. They can help with gut healing and reducing gut inflammation and reducing bloating. They can improve sexual function. So just about anything you can think of in the body that you want to improve, peptides can do. But they are not magic. When peptides bind to receptors, that's a great thing, but we need to give the body a signal that's going to help that peptide performance function. So again, if you're trying to build muscle, just taking a peptide, injecting certain peptides, not just going to automatically magically help you build muscle. You still have to perform resistance training and strip training to give the body the signal to build muscle. So again, it ain't magic. If you want to lose weight and using peptides are going to help you break down fat and prevent the buildup of new fat cells, you have to eat healthy, right? And this is important. When we're talking to people about peptides, 
is that you want to manage your expectations to give the body the signals that it needs to do to perform those functions. So how do peptides actually bind to those cell receptors? So what they do is that they're going to bind to receptors on the surface of the cell. Most of them are G-protein coupled receptors, and they're not going into the cell. They're going to bind to that receptor, and that G-protein coupled receptor is going to start a secondary messenger pathway, and that's going to amplify the signal. So it's like passing the message along, but the way it passes along, one person passes it, then 20 people pass it, and then 50, and however many people go on and on and on until it gets the nucleus of the cell and tells the body to perform a function. So again, the peptide it doesn't go in the cell, but in order for it to cause that transcription and those benefits, it needs to get to the nucleus, and that's where messenger pathways come in. But again, it's all about the peptide being specific for that receptor. It's like a key and a lock. Now, what can peptides help with? And this is where it gets fun. So let's go into point number two, what peptides can help with. So a lot of people know peptides because they can help with metabolic health and weight and body composition. And peptides like the GLP-1 agonists, like ALD-9604, there's IGF-1, there is mechanical growth factor. There's so many peptides that can help with body composition and weight management. But knowing which one specifically that's going to help you is where it's important to work with a practitioner who's experienced and knows about peptides. In regenerative medicine, peptides like BPC-157 and thymosin beta-4 can actually help heal and regenerate tissues and actually lower inflammation and reduce pain. Peptides that can improve cognition and mood support are peptides like C-Link and C-Max that can improve, again, that brain-derived neurotropic factor, but they're also nootropic, so helping with cognition and focus and balancing neurotransmitters to help with stress and anxiety. There are peptides that can improve immune system function like thymosin alpha-1 and thymosin beta-4, even though I did mention about it for pain and healing, it also can help balance the immune system, and that's important in conditions like autoimmune disease. And last, and one of my favorites, is in longevity and cellular medicine. So it's improving mitochondrial function, peptides like MOD-SC and Humanin and SS31, and also peptides like Epitalon that can help with telomere function. So peptides can be great for longevity and anti-aging and all these great things because they are going to help the cells function better. So now that we know peptides can be beneficial and can help us with all these different things, how do we get peptides in our body? So there's a lot of delivery methods, but most peptides are going to be delivered via subcutaneous injection. And so sub-Q injections are in the abdominal fat or subcutaneous fat of the belly, can be done in the hip. But again, these are small needles, small injections that can get in the system. Some peptides can be absorbed orally, like oral BPC-157, which can help with gut healing and gut inflammation. Peptides like lorazotide. Lorazotide can help with leaky gut and gut permeability and actually treating celiac or gluten sensitivity as well. Another peptide that's bioavailable oral is KPV. KPV is amazing for lowering gut inflammation. Some peptides can be done as a nasal spray, like nasal C-Max and C-Lang, which can actually help with that whole focus and cognition and cognitive performance. One peptide, even though this is kind of controversial, if it works well for many people, is PT-141, which is good for libido and sex drive. So PT-141 can be delivered as an injection, but also as a nasal spray. Some peptides can be done intravenously. Well, again, this has to be a very specialized treatment. The peptides that are good for immune system function, like your thymosin alpha-1s, there are some studies showing that it can be beneficial as an IV. And then for healing, some of those peptides that we mentioned earlier can be great as a topical cream or a topical gel, like BPC-157, thymosin beta-4, GHK copper. I'm going to do a whole other series on that. GHK copper is one of those rare peptides that can be done oral and topically and see a benefit. So we can use GHK copper as a great aesthetic peptide. Now, again, I forgot that to say one of the benefits of it. GHK copper can help with skin elasticity and growing hair and nail growth and all these great kind of beauty and aesthetic things. Now, GHK copper is very versatile. It can be done as a topical gel, hair drops, a shampoo, and a lot of different forms that can help it actually get to the tissue and improve hair growth and skin elasticity and so much more. But at the end of the day, the best route depends on the peptide, the condition being treated, and the patient preference. And this is where clinical guidance matters. So if you found this video helpful, please be on the lookout for more videos. I'm going to be talking about different peptides for different conditions. I'm going to do videos on specific peptides. I'm going to talk more about longevity and healing. So stay tuned for more here on my channel. So to learn more, please subscribe to my channel, like the page, share it with your friends, and be on the lookout for more videos on health and longevity. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you're struggling with chronic fatigue, chronic pain, dealing with weight gain, difficulty losing weight, difficulty building muscle, and just want to improve your longevity and your overall health and wellness, please check out my clinic, Innovative Wellness Center. The link to the clinic is below in the notes. So schedule an appointment with me or one of my other doctors, and we'll see you again in the next video.